Hey there YouTube, it's me, Broken Terrain, and I've got a fun scatter video for you today. I'm going to show you how to do this magic crystal on this little stone pedestal. So come along with me and check it out after the drop. Well, the secret to this project is a tea light from the dollar store, but not just any tea light. This is one of those jacuzzi or a, a flower pot tea lights, and it comes with several plastic gems as well. And we're gonna utilize the tea light and the gems for this project. You can see the light changes from color to color, and we're gonna also utilize this as well. We're gonna turn this into an elemental crystal. I'm just going to grab a piece of scrap, it's a half inch XPS foam, and I'm going to hide the tea light inside the foam. So using the tea light as a template, I sketch around with pen and then grab my X-Acto and cut out the shape. Don't try to cut it out in one pass. First. Uh, go in and create a line with the first pass and then with that second pass you can really get in there and, and uh, finish the cut. Excellent. It's a perfect fit. Then using a pen I'm just gonna freehand a nice area around the tea light and this is gonna serve as the stone pedestal. I don't have a fancy circle cutting jig, uh, maybe one day, but that day is not today. So I'm just gonna grab a ruler, my X-Acto, and trim the sides. Lots of little, uh, little trims. And then once I get uh, the basic shape, I'm going to take my X-Acto to those sharper edges and trim them down a bit to get something a little more circular. I'm not trying to get a perfect circle for this project, but something a little closer is, uh, is what I'm looking for. I like to add a little weight to all my scatter. So I find a nice thin piece of chipboard and one of my dependable one inch fender washers. Hot glue that down. And then before I glue my stone pedestal ring down to it, I'm gonna hit it up with the tin foil for some stone texture. Make sure you get in there really good with that texture hit all the sides. Perfect fit. Push it down nice and snug. Then trim the excess from the chipboard. Grab the tea light just to make sure everything is still fitting as it should. And now it's time to do the top of the pedestal. To do this, I just sketch the uh, outer ring onto another piece of scrap XPS foam. And then once again, slowly cut the edges round any rough edges and you can see uh, because the the top is much smaller I want just half this size so using my utility knife and uh, slowly cutting and, re and revolving the piece I get a nice half cut of the XPS foam 
and then I want to exaggerate the edges between the top and bottom half. So I'm going to use my X-Acto and I'm going to carefully break those edges, trim those edges down, and bevel them just a little bit. Then I'll grab the top piece and I'm going to hit those edges too. Don't forget, texture the top. I'm using my rolled up tinfoil method. Get those edges. Fantastic. I press the top down on the light so that I can see where I need to cut the hole so the light can come through the top. And uh, when I do this, the top sits a little outside of the light. I want the light to be a, a bit more in the top. So in order to do that, I score along the edge of where the tea light will sit and then I carefully remove some of the XPS foam so that the top of the light will sit inside the XPS foam cap. A much snugger fit. Then, with a little of my hot glue, I'm going to secure the top piece of the XPS foam to the top of the tea light and the best part of this is that the bottom holds the bottom of the tea light the top glued only to the top of the tea light and when you rotate the two pieces it acts like a switch for the tea light I'm pretty pleased with this now it's time to decorate uh, it's a little boring the pedestal and I thought I was going I thought I would play with the uh, the color changing aspects of the crystal so I thought I would along the base of this pedestal create a motif of the four elements so carefully I mark along the edges to denote four special stones or bricks along the circular pedestal. These four bricks will um, denote one of the four aspects of the elements. Here you can see I'm sketching a little flame for the fire element. On one of them, a droplet for the water element. I'll carefully design a leaf for the earth element. And then finally, our fourth element, air, gets a little lightning bolt. Awesome. Pretty happy with those. Time to go back in with the X-Acto and just make a light score over all your pen work. The edges were fairly simple. It gets a little more complicated with those elemental shapes. Just take your time, control the X-Acto knife, you'll get a nice score. And then with that nice score done, you're going to go back in with your pen and widen those grooves. Again, the straight lines are very easy, but once you get to those little uh, pictographs, the little icons for our four elements, it gets a little more complicated. Take your time, work that pen in, go over them a couple times if you have to. It's going to look great when it's all painted up. And while I'm finishing this up, I'm going to take this opportunity to thank you for watching this video and ask you um, 
to help me grow the channel. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video with friends if you think anyone uh, would dig this kind of uh, entertainment. Please send the video to them. I, I would really appreciate it. Um, thank you. Thank you very much for watching. I couldn't do it without you. This is one of my favorite aspects of crafting and building. All the fun little detail and design work. And I really enjoyed putting these four elemental runes in the sides of this pedestal. It was a lot of fun. And I certainly recommend you try some carved runes when you do any of your stonework projects. Finally, it was time to give the top a little bit of decoration. Uh, because the middle of these, this cap piece is going to be dominated by the crystal, I thought I would just do a nice ring of stones along the outside. I had toyed with the idea of coming up with runes on the top that would then line up with the runes along the sides, but the way this tea light screws the top screws into the bottom and how it activates and how it unactivates the trying to get these things to line up would just be nearly impossible so to save myself the headache i just did a decorative ring of stone and uh and left it at that Of course, the, the same sketch with a pen, score with an X-Acto, and then go back in with the pen tip and widen all those lines. And a little test. Man, it's working fantastic with the mechanism completely hidden. And now it's time to work on the magic crystal at top. I actually tried several different materials before I returned to the crystals that came with the tea light themselves. Uh, maybe one day I'll share with you my outtakes, uh, but trust me when I say the, those methods failed me pretty spectacular and this method actually creates a really nice looking crystal. So if you're going to try this project at home and want a a fun easy time of it then use the gems that come with it to start I establish a square of glue on a piece of parchment paper and just place the gems uh, in a nice pattern around the square to contain the and funnel the light and then it's just a matter of uh, filling in the gaps between those crystals with some hot glue and um, in as clean a way as possible because you don't want hot glue spilling from the uh, corners of your crystal that would look silly and cheap so carefully apply the hot glue and then once your first foundation of four stones has dried or the glue, or the glue has cooled um, you can begin to layer to so put down more glue and keep adding stones. A very haphazard uh, type of brickwork, but if you move uh, slowly and deliberately and pay attention to the shapes of these small little uh, gem crystals, eventually you will find a, a nice way to sit them all in together and keep them uh, glued and looking good. Unfortunately, I did a lot of this work off camera. I am sorry. Uh, once I got going with the crystal, I got excited as it continued to uh, grow and I wasn't paying attention to keeping everything on a, in camera view. But here it is finished. And because I just can't resist, I'll put the crystal on the base 
and with all of those lights you can see uh, the light the tea light lighting up the crystal and creating a great effect so now it's time to paint and I actually pulled the tea light top out of the top of the foam and that was just so that I could uh, paint the plastic a black so as to keep the light from um, dissipating out the sides and the, and the cracks and to keep the light um, beaming upward into the crystal as much as possible. And then it's time to coat the foam in the Black Magic Craft base coat, which is half matte Mod Podge and half acrylic paint. Once completed, I'll turn to my Apple Barrel Elephant Gray and give everything a nice coat. I absolutely love getting paint down on a project. This is where things start to come alive. With the elephant gray finished, I'm going to turn to my granite gray from Apple Barrel and just give everything a very strong, healthy dry brush. It's going to lighten it up, hit all those raised areas of texture, and just really start uh, giving the look of stone for this small pedestal. Once the dry brush was complete, it was time to turn to a nice black wash. I'm gonna use my black homemade wash and, wait a minute, that don't look right. Oh shoot, wrong brush. <laughs> All right, I was gonna go easy on the wash, but heck with it, I needed to fix that mistake. And so I just pour it down on top, let that wash flow into all those cracks and crevices. It's going to make those runes look fantastic. Anywhere we had carved some line work, the wash is just going to dip down and, uh, and that black is going to get into all those cracks. It's also going to play with the surfaces of the stone as well and just give everything a nice dark tone. Because I love to play with my terrain as I make it, I realized that the edges of the plastic um, had light beaming out the side, so I quickly grabbed some black craft paint, painted the outside of the, uh, of the ring of plastic to keep that light from pouring through the edges. And then I grabbed my Craft Smart Vanilla, and with a very thin dry brush, or light dry brush. I'm going in and hitting all those edges and raised surfaces. This is going to uh, undarken the piece just a little bit while at the same time um, highlighting all the detail work and all the edges of that stonework that we've put all that time into. Then uh, just because I didn't want the crystal to look plain with the light off, I'm taking that same vanilla color and I'm going to go in on all those edges and corners and I'm going to dry brush that white. It's very subtle. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, uh, but when finished, the crystal looks a, a whole lot cooler and a bit more defined and way more detailed with that uh, very delicate white uh, dry brush along the edges. And once finished, I'll just glue the crystal to the base and our piece is done. I've got the crystal set up with some cultists around it 
Are they worshiping it? Do they want to destroy it? Do they want to steal its power? Well, that's up for you to decide, fellow dungeon masters and storytellers. In this particular instance, the cultists are going to destroy it. And our heroes have just stepped into the temple and are going to try and stop them. Good luck, heroes. And here's just another great shot, the crystal in action. Uh, just a very simple piece of scatter, but boy, it really elevates the room. I love it. Highly recommend this project, YouTube. So, thank you for watching. As always, like each other, love each other, have a great day, and craft on. Hey, still here? Just a reminder, hit that subscribe button and check out some of my other videos. If you loved this one, I know you'll love those. Have a great day.